uh, we have rules of engagement mm -hmm. when it comes to medical services. Mm -hmm. In fact, there is a medical services act uh, which spe specifies all this. Mm -hmm. If during the course of his or her duty a doctor makes an error, uh, that's subject to uh, a review because that case needs to be reviewed and investigated. Mm -hmm. And um, the report is usually uh, sent to the ministry and also to the councils because you have a medical and dental council who are primarily responsible, you know, to regulate, you know, medical practice and care, and they support the ministry in this regard because these are professionals who have been in the service and most of them are veterans. Mm -hmm. Similarly also, when it comes to the nurses, uh, the nursing practice is also under the nursing council. Mm -hmm. So all uh, malpractices or any injuries that may be caused to a patient, you know, once it is reported, should be immediately in investigated. Yeah. And the, is the, the disciplinary proceedings should now be levied by this bodies. There are also stories that people people say, like in, in the hospital, in our main hospital, mm -hmm. to be specific, that during very critical, critical times like operation and that, there will be power shortages. As I mentioned earlier, the health system is very complex because it's not about drugs, equipment, medicines, you know, and all our medical applications. Mm -hmm. It's also about utility services, water, mm -hmm electricity, gas, all these things are needed, you know, to ensure that uh, we achieve a better outcome when it comes to treatment. Usually these things do happen, but now, uh, because of this, uh, I will inform you that uh, two weeks or three weeks back, uh, NAWEC management um, has now come closer to the Minister of Health. In fact, we are now into partnership. Okay. They are now going around assessing all our health facilities in terms of electricity needs. They are also looking at uh, back, back stopping okay. because most of the time when uh, major operations are being done, which is very dangerous mm -hmm. because imagine when somebody is under the knife and power just goes off, you know, and then, you know, somebody is under anesthesia, mm -hmm. you know, is half dead, power goes off. That patient can die. All major facilities, all major minor health facilities have been fitted with backup generators. Okay. Sometimes you have operational difficulties in making sure the right person who is going to switch off the backup generator is not available. So sometimes it's about communication. And that's why NAWEC is being engaged to make sure that our systems are on high alert. But the instances like off, that, what would happen? Would, would the doctor be dismissed? Well, the doctor, may not, the, 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 the doctor in that instance... Or the person in charge, because, I mean, he's, he's doing the operation. He's, he's not taking care of the electricity yeah. or some... Well, I, I don't think, per se, you can put the blame squarely on the, on the clinicians at that stage. This is about um, power supply, which does not come from the Minister of Health. Yeah. We know it comes from a, a yeah. national company. Yeah. Yeah. But as I said, this has been recognized by NAWEC, and they are putting up measures right now. They've already gone around the country, and they are helping us to make sure that once their their system is off, because they can also go off by accident. Something can happen within their system, system yeah. for which they are not responsible for, or they can have no control over. Yeah. And then these things happen. But being aware of it, they are now putting us on a switch over channels okay. so that at our, our generators automatically can switch on to power and I think this was in deadly discourse and we had a roadmap already uh, this is also recognized of course by the president himself yeah. and uh, he has made he has given directives to make sure that electricity is stabilized in the okay. ministry the healthcare system is it's too big we can't discuss in yeah. 45 minutes or half an hour mm. we'll have to invite you back to come on the show yeah. and we can discuss more right, about other issues as uh, well no, yeah no, but before we go just yeah last yeah, just, just say your last that, word um, to the general public the efforts of the minister of health need to be recognized in the sense that now we have reduced the referral loads or the load on the arbitrage in terms of uh, referrals yeah. now most of the operations are done in Brikama and in Serekunda, you know SL. Know, and so, on. Mm -hmm. so those things are fully operational. 
So that is why you can see we are reducing the load on, on the hospital. And uh, as we go along, our aim is not to have even a single referral from these peripheral hospitals to, mm -hmm. to the main referral hospital. Mm -hmm. And we are really doing very well in that area. So that's that's, good. That's last word, Mr. My Mr. last word is yeah. that um, health is wealth. And that's yeah. the cornerstone of our policy. But uh, just to remind the general public also that uh, health services in this country is almost highly subsidized. It's nothing. Five dollars fees, you know, you get all the drugs. Yeah. I remember yeah. going to a private um, pharmacy recently myself, yeah. and I said, okay, I was going to buy Quatem. This is anti-malarial. I mean, it cost me 350 dollars, Gambian dollars. Contrary, when you go to our health pharmacy, you get this almost at five dollars. Really? So, really. Yeah. So, and this has not changed since 1988 when the user charges were introduced. So I think there is a general concern that also the health financing needs to be looked at and this is what we are now doing to make sure that all the other inputs like drugs and so on are also available because they will go along to complement quality without which of course you can't say there is quality health care because you can't imagine going to a, a, a health facility and say we are, we are out of drugs but how much are we also putting in That's true. and we are also thinking of you know, uh, in establishing a health insurance very soon. Thank you. That was Mr. Cisse and Jai from the <laughs> Ministry of Health and Social Welfare. I mean, we talked about a lot of things, but hopefully we'll invite them another time. And then if you have any questions, any any concerns, you can always contact us. Um, and the number to call is 666-7469. The Fatu Show is partly sponsored by Comium. But before we leave, I have the Roots Bongo Band in the studio. They will give us um, entertainment before we leave. Hi, Nina. Hi. It's good to have you on the show again. Thank you. Good to be here. And what's new? You have a new single, I heard. Yes. You know, we've been promoting the album that we released in January. That's okay. um, Leaders of Tomorrow from the Roots Bongo Band. This is for you, this Hello. copy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you for Aww. having us. <laughs> and um, yeah, now in the meantime, we have been working on a African. Okay album and we just want to give the people a taste of what they can expect to come from us okay. so this is our first single okay in mandinka it's a love song Fasi yang fang nuh 